A foramen ovale is a small hole between the two upper chambers of the heart called the atria. It's a small slit-like defect that occurs in utero, in normal fetal cardiovascular development. And it allows for oxygenated blood to bypass the fetal lungs. And upon birth, after the first breath or so, that slit-like opening closes, except it, it persists and it does not close in about 25% of individuals, typical healthy adults. When it doesn't close, that hole, which we call foramen ovale, is then called a patent foramen ovale, or an open foramen ovale. And in the vast majority of patients, 99.5% of individuals, that defect, the PFO, patent foramen ovale, has no clinical consequence, implication. It doesn't require study, surveillance, or management. Roughly a third of all strokes are so-called cryptogenic strokes. That means there are strokes, there are events, neurologic events that we do not have a good cause for. And cryptogenic strokes occurring in younger individuals less than the age of 60, in those individuals the prevalence of PFO is quite high. It's much higher than in the standard population. When patients who have an unexplained stroke that it looks to be a blood clot, we think that that blood clot traveled from the venous circulation across the hole and into the brain, across the PFO. And it's an indication in those situations after an appropriate workup for closing the PFO. Now, in those individuals older than the age of 60, perhaps up to age 65, if they have very few risk factors for stroke, they're not smokers, they don't have diabetes, they don't have high cholesterol or high blood pressure. If they have a paucity of cardiovascular risk factors and they have a large PFO, we oftentimes would lean to favor PFO closure as well. This decision is made in concert with other providers. It's a multidisciplinary decision. An interventional cardiologist with a referring cardiologist, a neurologist, and oftentimes vascular medicine physicians that work together to order these tests, evaluate the patient, and to make a team-based approach. The procedure itself is an outpatient procedure. It's done through a small incision in the vein of the leg. The device is placed carefully in through that hole. The device is made up of two discs and one disc is externalized on the left side. The second disc is externalized on the right side. These discs are created with an oppositional force. They're made out of an elastic material called nitinol with fabric interwoven. And so when the discs are released, they come together almost like a clamshell on either side of the hole. Upon release of the device, skin grows over the device and fully encases the device so that it becomes fused with the wall of the heart and completes the closure. The care that we deliver for this procedure is, without exception, the most sophisticated and advanced. We're using advanced imaging. We're using a minimally invasive approach. The patients are going home on the same day. It's not a painful procedure. Our success rates are 100% without any complications. The talent that we have in the cath lab um, with the the talent and the expertise that we have amongst that multidisciplinary team approach that I spoke to. The, the fact that we work well together as a team to deliver care. The patients are the biggest beneficiaries of that.